Okay, let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm wide open. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Next step in my turbo build adventure is actually going to be just checking a little bit about the health and the status of the engine. Now, it has suffered with a bit of overheating in the past. So I've replaced things like the thermostat and radiator cap. Uh, it generally doesn't have any leaks, but it was boiling over. The problem is while replacing those items rectified some of the, the bubbling over, it still loses a bit of water every now and then, which leads me to believe that there may be an inherent issue with the engine along the lines of a blown head gasket. Now, before we add additional boost or additional pressure into the engine, I think it's a good idea that we just check the vitals and see that it is actually doing what it needs to do. The compression test, uh, which is what we want to do here now today to ascertain whether the head gasket is blown or not, is part of it and I think an oil pressure test is probably also going to be on the cards. I just want to go into this knowing that well I'm working with a, a semi-healthy engine. So to help me with the compression test my mate Meg's from FSU. Now you've seen him in a previous video where we took a look at his beautiful A86 and we took it for a bit of a drive. We ha actually haven't revisited that. Come join me, come join me. We haven't revisited that one since you've changed the engine though. No. No, not yet. Not yet, not but yet. we will get there. So that's that's going to be coming. So what do we need to do here in order to check the compression? Okay, so first up is remove spark plugs, okay. um, fit the compression tester into the spark plug. In the then, spark plug hole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then um, disconnect the fuel pump, so by the fuse or whatever. Full open throttle, crank at four revolutions, four or five revolutions. Then from there, start checking at what PSI or what bar each cylinder is. Um, if there's one that seems to be lower than the rest, and what we do is we literally just take 20 moles, 10 moles of oil, yeah. put it in there, rerun the compression test. If the compression is higher, that means that your rings are shot. Okay, if so the compression isn't higher, then you know it's something in the head. Ah, so there we go. Okay, so we'll be able to tell whether it's actually down in the rotating assembly or if it's sitting up in the head. Yeah. Now look, obviously I'm no professional mechanic, so don't... We're both fumbling our way through this. Yeah. So, okay, so that's what we're going to tackle. We're going to check the compression across it. Um, and I'll dive into a little bit of an explanation as to how a head gasket can blow and how I'd be losing water. The thing is, I don't suspect that it's blown into, let's say, an oil galley or an oil jacket because oil's still clean. Yeah, and it's it would not be, it, it would be milky or frothy if it was blown from a cylinder into an oil jacket. If it blew between an oil and a water jacket, then you're going to get mayonnaise. And that's yeah. simple. You just open up the oil cap and if it looks like mayonnaise and then don't lick it. But <laughs> yeah, it's done. Look, it could also just be that maybe just where the cylinder is, maybe it's just cracked open a little bit into a water jacket. So that could also obviously just increase the temperature of the water. Yeah, it's increasing the temperature of the water. It's pushing, it's pressurizing the water system yeah. and that pushes it past any overflows. Yeah. So that's what I'm suspecting it could be. Kind of hoping it is that because if it's rings, it puts Rebolt. this project on a serious back foot and a serious paw. So let's tackle that. We're going to do this little step by step and join us for this one. If you haven't seen a compression test before, this is how it's done. It's also worth noting that it's a wise idea to unplug the coil packs. On the Mazda MX-5, these coil packs, well, they develop quite a bit of charge and by not completing the circuit, well, you can burn out the coil packs. So don't forget to uh, unplug the connection to those before you start cranking the engine. Another one of the reasons why I think that the head gasket may be blown, aside from it losing water, is the fact that there is a common design flaw in these B-series Mazda engines, especially when used in a Mazda MX-5. They were never designed to run longitudinally from 
front to back. They were designed for front wheel drive to run transversely. And as such, the water ports, inlets and the outlets on the block are both on the same side. So there isn't a cross flow of water. So what happens is the water goes in in the front of the, the engine, circulates partially, and then is ejected again back into the radiator. This means that you get really poor flow here towards cylinder number four against the firewall. You can rectify this, and it's probably one of those things that I should do is by doing a coolant reroute that is going to take water from the radiator and plumb it into the back of the engine and let it flow across, cooling down everything evenly. But we've taken a look at the plugs and they all seem to be, well, matched. They all look roughly the same. So there's no warning bells just yet. Let's hope that it hasn't blown towards the back of the head. Okay, so obviously we can see here that the fuel relay for the pump, I would assume, is this one over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it off and then turn the ignition on and see if the fuel pump primes. If the uh, fuel pump doesn't prime, then we're good to go and we don't really need to worry about any of the other ones. Okay, there we go, that's it there. Put it somewhere safe. Ignition is on. We don't hear the fuel pump, so it was the right relay. Done, easy. Cool. Do difficult one first. Yeah. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm wide open. Yeah. Uh. Get it. <laughs> what not to do? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's try hey it. kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I think that was four primes. Okay. Yeah. What are we sitting on? Um, so that is about a hundred and... 22 PSI, 8 bar, uh, 8, no, just about 8 bar. Well, it actually sounded like it was still holding pressure, so that's it's a good sign. Mm. Yeah, it was dropping really slowly, yeah, but which could be anything. Yeah, but I mean, it's all what's meant to be dropped in the level. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, you see it, Full problem. Uh, Was that an exercise in futility? Um, yeah, <laughs> this uh, motor's shot. I mean, 110 PSI, we're gonna work with PSI, it's just because, um, so the bar reading on this gauge just sits really tucked in by the bezel and that, not really nice. Um, but the PSI is a little easier to read, so that's why we're working with PSI. And if you're from the USA or something, then it makes more sense. Um, okay. I don't know, you, 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 know, you guys work in, Pounds per freedom eagles or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, and uh, 110 psi across the board. Yeah. Uh, well, 110, 110, 109, 110. Yeah, but I mean, 109 could have literally just been maybe a fraction of a rotation, too little too compared little, to that. Yeah, it's too few. So. Um, which, and, and listen, it was holding those pressures pretty well as well. So yeah. I don't think that there's really any issue with the head here. No. It's not like it's bleeding past valves. It doesn't seem to be bleeding past rings. No. And rings would have shown up with the Initially, leak test. Initially it wouldn't have been close yeah. to 100 PSI either. So we don't need to do a leak down test or anything of the sorts. No. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not. I know, because now you're not finding your problem. <laughs> now I don't know where the water's <laughs> going to. I think it needs a big vent in a bonnet, and then there we go, sorted. Done deal. Yeah, The thing is, it's not particularly getting hot, it's just losing a bit of water, and that's a bit of a question. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of digging and fault finding there. What do you think it could be? Could be a Welsh plug, maybe. That's you think I'm maybe out. losing it in a Welsh plug? Look, it's, it is it is possible, because I mean, this, what, this is 20 plus years old. Yeah, yeah so, so 20 years old. It could be that. Um, I have a sneaky suspicion, um, and you'll recall I had that with this issue. Those of you that have followed the Instagram account will know that they had a bit of a water leak down the back. The heater hoses. Yeah. I could be leaking by the heater hoses, which are something, you know, hoses that are going to need to be addressed because if we climb there into the engine and where the downpipe goes, it goes right past those heater hoses. So those almost need to reroute, or I need to do a heater core delete. I'm just curious as to where the water's going yeah. because it's is losing water. 
But how much is it losing? Well, that's the thing. It's losing, it'll lose maybe a third, quarter to a third of the radiator on a long 200 kilometer drive. Okay, well, that is quite a lot. That's, that's a fair amount. That's, that's, yeah. There's, there's a mean, reason for concern there. And I've followed you before and I've never seen any white smoke. White so. smoke. So it's not burning. It's, I mean, yeah. I, I think the head, that head gasket's good. Yeah. It's not bleeding into the oil galleys. Yeah. It's not bleeding between cylinders because then we would have had two adjacent cylinders yeah. that were down on pressure. Yeah. And we've done this cold. This isn't a, a hot engine that has expanded or that has oil uh, resting up by the oil rings. Um, no, in yellow compression rings, no. you know, helping seal things off. Mm. This was pretty much a bone dry start. Yeah. Um, it would have built up a little bit of oil pressure there now with these 16 odd rotations. But yeah, but I mean, that's also not sufficient to hide any. It's not going to be like seven bar oil pressure there. No. So we're going to have to keep on digging, but mm. bittersweet. But are we sure also the radiator isn't maybe leaking? Maybe in one of the side little plastic tanks? It could. So we're going to have to dig a little bit and find out where that water leak is coming from because I. We could do a pressure test on the water system. I think that's probably the next port of call. Mm. It's just a pressure test on the system. I'll grab one from crazy. work and we'll do it. Okay. okay. Can they... Well, there we go. So this was a video about nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah. Comment. <laughs> like. Subscribe. <laughs> All of those. All of those. <laughs>